In this video, we average free. In this video, we average free. In this video, we average freelance writing salaries from a bunch of different websites so that you can get the best. In am I going to get it this time? In this video, we average freelance. <laughs> Come on, get it. In this video, we're going to average freelance writing salaries from a bunch of different websites so you can get the most accurate freelance writing salary and also six types of freelance writing jobs for beginners check it out what's up guys it is rowan here from loveworkathome.com where we help you find freedom and work-life balance by sharing information on making extra side income which is over here make uh, finding a work from home job starting an online business if that sounds good hit subscribe and smack that bell so you don't miss out on the great content in store First, we are going to start with six types of freelance writing jobs for beginners so that you can get a good idea on, you know, what's out there, what you can actually do and what might interest you because, uh, you know, as a freelance writer, you want to make sure that if you're writing every day, you want to be writing about stuff and writing in a way that interests you and engages you so that you can do it, you know, day after day and make a career out of it, make bank, have a fantastic love work at home. That's what we're all about. So the first one that we uh, want to, I want to share is blogging. So a personal web log, blog, web log, get it? See, see how they, see how they cleverly made that word blog. I'm assuming that anyway. It's about things uh, that you would be confident that you can provide an, a valued opinion on, like this person here who's just mad about her dogs or dogs in general. Um, so this website owner talks about not only their dogs or dogs in general, but also things like animal welfare, DIY, eco, um, products and reviews, holy cat, health, all that sort of stuff. Or another one is Making Sense of Sense, where Michelle um, actually blogs, this is Michelle over here, I'm assuming, blogs about how to save money, how to make money, amongst other things. Number two is SEO content. So writing with relevant keywords that rank an article high in Google's, well, the aim is to rank it high in Google's search so that your articles are found and people get to your website and all that sort of stuff. For example, our blog here, uh, the best home, the, sorry, 10 best home office colors for creativity and productivity, which focuses on the key, the primary keyword, which is best home office color. So we've got it in there about six times. We've made the article a certain length. Uh, we've added links. So we've made it, um, there's a lot of on-page SEO that we've included there to help us build up in, in Google's eyes. The number three is web content writing. So this is when you write for online magazine style websites, whether um, it has a central theme like architecture or home styling, or maybe a more diverse content range like the, the big broad health and wellness uh, niche. It's that's yeah, that's what web content writing is all about. It's kind of a bit more like uh, magazine-y writing for magazines and things like that. Number four is copywriting. So writing for brands to market their products. That's what copywriting is all about with the aim to help kind of sell something or push a product or a service. So it can range from ad copies like this uh, shoe listing. It's just got a very short amount of copy there. Uh, also Facebook posts, for example. So they've got a bit of copy there. And if you click through, they'll have some more copy or maybe even just uh, the copy on a, a website that is, has the aim of um, influencing and engaging readers. It might even be um, hard copy. So hard copy pamphlets or magazines that you could find work on. So it can obviously be both online and offline. Number five is article writing. So whether you write features or articles for clients about things that interest you uh, or you are an expert of. So it's kind of similar to blogging something that, that you're interested about, but you would be writing for other website owners, maybe other bloggers, maybe yeah, who knows. So for example, backpacking through Southeast Asia or cooking traditional Cajun recipes, for example, you know, there's all sorts of things. If you're into cooking and you know recipes, then you know that could be a good option. Number six is ghostwriting. So this is when you write for someone else who is the author or who is named as the author and your name doesn't appear as the creator for the content. So this is what I started with on our Love Work at Home blog. So as you can see here, it appears that I uh, wrote this article, but it was actually written by a freelance ghostwriter who knows much more about freelance writing than I do. Whereas nowadays, my writers are actually named and have a profile picture on there if they want that. 
And I think that's good because if my writers, um, you know, wanting to find some freelance writing jobs elsewhere, then they're going to be able to flick these articles over to their prospective employer or, um, or um, website owner so that they can say, hey, look, this is some of the content I did. It's, it's got their name. It's got their badge, uh, their little uh, profile picture. So, okay, let's talk about freelance writing salaries. So there are a bunch of different websites saying a bunch of different things. So let's try and make a bit of sense of this. First, we'll go over to uh, Payscale, payscale.com. So they're saying that the average freelance writer hourly pay $24 and the salary is $39,555. Whereas Indeed is saying $20.40 per hour, which they say equates to $47,565 per annum. Then we have ZipRecruiter, which uh, from past experience, these guys price things maybe just a little bit high, but anyway, they're obviously um, another resource. They are saying $30 per hour and the annual salary of 63213 per year. Glassdoor is saying the a uh, annual salary of 52800 per annum. They didn't have an hourly rate. And the Bureau of Labor Statistics is saying $30 per hour, $30.40 per hour, or $63,200 per year. So what does that actually mean? Yeah, let's get some averages here. We've got our resource pay scale, Indeed, ZipRecruiter, uh, Glassdoor, Labor, Bureau of Labor Statistics. And what I've done is orange is the, kind of the lowest um, estimate that we've found, and the green is the highest estimate we've found. More importantly, the averages are... $26.20 per hour in the US for a freelance writer. And annually that equates to 53,000, almost 53,300. So that gives you a pretty good idea. Another way to look at it is to have a look at Upwork. So if you're a freelance writer, then a website like Upwork.com can be a great place to get your profile up there and start making, um, earning some jobs or, or finding some jobs. So looking at some of their, so these are the highest rated writers. Obviously you're going to want to start low, build your experience, because as you can see, they've got little badges here, top rated, top rated, top rated. That's probably because they've been, they've done a lot of jobs with a high success rate and that, that means they, they're able to bump up their, the fees that they charge. But anyway, these top rated people are charging $40 per hour, 35, 44, uh, $125 per hour. That's massive. 35, 95, 35, 55, 100, 60, 60. So yeah, you're seeing a really diverse mix from kind of low tens up to over $100 per hour. So I hope you got something out of that. I hope that um, explains things a bit more and, and gives you a good idea of what you can actually earn as a freelance writer, but also some of the different types of content and fields that you could get into as a freelance writer. Feel free to share this with anyone that you think might benefit from it. Otherwise, hit subscribe and smack that bell and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.